Yeah, so we just don't do studies like that where we randomly determine different kinds of therapeutic interaction factors and then assign patients to different conditions. Мы не проводим таких исследований, когда мы специально выбираем конкретные характеристики терапевтических отношений и случайным образом распределяем испытуемых по этим видам терапевтических отношений. Yeah, so, so again, from a scientific perspective, that's an important difference between the two different sets of literatures because the one we actually can have quite a bit of scientific confidence in, the therapeutic relationship literature, less so. С научной точки зрения очень важна эта разница в подходах исследовательских, потому что если с точки зрения техники у нас есть научная доказательность и в литературе, то в литературе, касающейся терапевтических отношений, степень научности меньше. And, and again, in the book that I, I gave to Dimitri, <laughs> what, what, what you'll see, in fact, is the literature that's cited is almost all correlational research. Because that's really the state of the art. Yeah. So again, when you think about this sort of dynamic between techniques versus relationships, there's been this ongoing debate in the literature. And again, we would argue, of course, that you can't apply techniques without a relationship. That, that, that basically techniques rest on some kind of a therapeutic relationship or some kind of a way of interacting between the therapist and the patient. And on the other hand, we would argue that, in fact, also that the therapeutic relationship itself is an intervention. So again, as a therapist, you have the ability to adapt your behavior to change the way that you relate to patients in ways that allow them different kinds of ways to change themselves. So again, we would argue that again, this debate about the, the technique versus the relationship is kind of a false dichotomy. So it's not important just what you do, but how you do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.